the best for last because this is definitely a significantly more difficult example than the previous three and therefore at least as far as i'm concerned a more fun example yeah all right cool so to start what we're going to do is divide both sides of the given equation by 2xy doing so we can write the y prime is going to equal x squared plus um, y squared divided by 2xy and then uh, that we can say is the same as saying that y prime is equal to x squared over 2xy and then um, plus y squared over 2xy. Cool. And that will mean then that we have in our next step the y prime is equal to um, 1 half um, x over y um, plus 1 half y over x. Yeah? Okay. Now, here, um, we're going to do something uh, pretty uh, nice, which is we're going to say that z is equal to y over x. And um, saying that will allow us to write the following, which is that y prime is equal to 1 half. Um, and then notice that if z is y over x, x over y is 1 over z. So 1 half times 1 over z. And then um, we'll have um, plus um, 1 half um, z right and that's because again y over x is z um, now this substitution will force us to write the following which is that um, y is equal to x times z which then means that y prime is equal to uh, x prime which is 1 um, times z by product rule plus x times z prime right okay cool um, all right, so that's y prime. So then uh, we need to replace this y prime here by what we just wrote down in black, um, which is that it equals um, it equals z and then plus x times z prime, right? Now, subtracting z from both sides of this equation, we could write that the left side is just x times z prime, and on the right side, um, the left side is x times z prime, right? And then the right side, and that's after we subtracted um, a z, so we will have a minus z here. And so th this here is going to just be negative 1 half z. So we could um, save time by doing this and then putting a minus sign right here. Yeah? Okay, cool. Now, notice that this here, actually, we can write more succinctly as like... Um, the following, which is um, 1 minus um, z squared over 2z. You could check back, but that's exactly what we had had. What we had, had. Okay, over um, 2z, right? Okay, cool. Over 2z. Cool, there we are. And um, so then next we could write that we have um, x times uh, dz dx. Um, is equal to uh, 1 minus z squared over um, 2z, and we can proceed to solve uh, for um, y uh, from here, yeah? Okay, first we have to solve for z, and then in turn we'll be able to solve for y. Now, um, I said dz dx for z prime because um, z is a function of y and x, but y is a function of x, so z is a function of x, yeah? Cool. All right. Um, so I don't think we need this here anymore and we definitely need space. So let's get rid of this junk here as well and uh, slide this up there. Cool. There we are. And so then next it's clear what we intend to do, which is um, separate the variables. So we need to separate the variables from there. To separate the variables, notice that we need to multiply both sides of this equation by the reciprocal of the right side, right? And then by dx, and then by 1 over x, right? If we do all three things, then we will be able to write an equivalent equation that reads the following, which is 2z um, over um, 1 minus z squared uh, dz is equal to uh, 1 over x dx. What I just wrote down is equivalent to this equation. Um, and it's gotten by multiplying this equation by 1 over x, and then by dx, and then by the reciprocal of this on both sides. 
all three of them on both sides, right? Okay, cool, cool, cool. That's just algebra, right? Now, we integrate both sides of this, and when we do, uh, on the left side, we just have a simple U substitution. But yeah, if you do the U substitution correctly, you should be able to get to, um, you should be able to get to, say, the following equation on the left side, which is negative the natural log of, um, and then it's uh, 1 minus z squared. And then on the right side, you should just get the natural log of x plus c, right? Okay, cool. And yes, we have a constant from the left and from the right, but we've combined them into one constant on the right side, hence plus c. Okay, cool. Then next, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by negative 1. And when we do, uh, we're going to get the following, which is um, we're going to get a negative in front of ln, which is fine. And then we're going to uh, say that negative c is k, um, or like, uh, yeah, why not? Negative c is um, k, right? Um, so plus k. And I'll write in black as I had done, as I had started, plus k. And then um, that means that's all after multiplying both sides of this last equation by a negative. So that negative from the left side uh, by a negative 1, that is, um, multiplying both sides. OK, you get it, you get it, you get it. So this is it. And then next is um, we're going to say e on both sides. Now here, e and ln cancel. So we're just going to get 1 minus z squared. And then on the right side, we're going to get, um, well, by the ln rules, I could take this negative and give it to x, right? The x in the argument. So negative 1, I guess, right there. OK, cool. And e and ln again cancel, so I just get x to the negative 1. OK, but before we do, we do all that, notice that this is, by exponent rules, e to this times e to the k. Right? Okay, so let me actually lead with the e to the k. So we'll have e to the k, right? Um, times times e to the ln x to the negative 1. And this junk is just going to be x to the negative 1. So I'll just write that. Um, so we have x to the negative 1. But x to the negative 1 is 1 over x. So I'll just write that. And then furthermore, we observe that e to the k is just some constant, which I'll choose to call q. So I'll say e to the k is equal to q, right, capital Q. And if I do that, then I can write the following, which is I could make space here. <sighs> Almost done. Um, slide this. And so I could write that I've got um, 1 minus z squared is equal to q over um, x. That means that um, I've got, or let's see, I could move this to the right and then, yeah, so I could write 1 minus q over x is equal to z squared, which means that z uh, is equal to um, plus or minus square root of, plus or minus square root of, um, and that's nice enough. Okay, square root of, and um, it's going to be square root of 1 minus q over x. Uh, but z is equal to y over x, if you recall. And we're looking for um, y, which is uh, y is equal to x times z. So then we see that um, z um, times x is really y. So our solution y is going to be, well, I'll do it. I'll write in black. Let me slide this over here at the bottom. But our solution y, which is x times z, right, based on that substitution we made, it's x times z. So our solution y is going to be y of x equals x times z, so plus or minus x times root. Nice, same kind of beautiful square root sign. I'm obsessed with writing beautiful square root signs. 1 minus q over x, because most of the time the ones I draw are ugly. Yeah, there we are. OK, cool. And this is my final example of separation of variables.
Um, take care.